Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Garchor Movie Palace. This evening, I'm going to take you back to 1926. That was one of Gershwin's hits from 1926. That was Fascinating Rhythm. And this evening, that's where we're heading. Fascinating rhythm, fascinating films, fascinating fun stuff. Ah, welcome to our movie night. Now, if back in 1926 you were to have gone to a movie palace somewhere in, let's say, in the United States, somewhere in the civilized world, you would have been treated not only to a film, you would have been treated to short films, you would have been treated to music from the organist. You would have had a night's entertainment. You would have had a drink, you would have had a nibble, you would have had all sorts of exciting things, and of course the main feature was why you were there. Tonight's main feature, ladies and gentlemen, is the legendary silent film from Buster Keaton, The General. And in a moment we will be giving this projectionist, the projectionist this evening is Vanessa, giving the projectionist a signal and the film will be starting. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen tonight. We're doing it in true silent movie style. Hmm. So, you will shortly see... Notice I have a huge monitor in front of me tonight. Um, the idea is I have to watch the film as well. I have to know what I'm playing. So, the film will start and I will accompany the film. You will see me in the corner of your screen. I will be down there in the corner doing my thing. But the main feature is, of course, the film. Now, remember in those days, films were films on big reels. And at some point, the reel had to be changed. What happened when the reel was being changed? The organist came back up from the orchestra pit and played a couple of tunes until the organist got a signal from the projectionist that we're ready to go with part two. So that's what we're going to have. We're going to have an intermission. Now the film itself is about one hour and 20 minutes long. Um, it's about an hour and 20 minutes long. I think after roughly 40, 42 minutes or something like that, real one ends. There's a sort of natural pause in the film. And we will come to a natural pause at that point. I will have something to drink because obviously I'm playing the entire time. It's non-stop. There's no rest for me at all uh, during this kind of thing. And uh, then we'll have a quick chat again. I will play a couple of tunes from 1926 as a cinema organist would have done in those days, and then we shall resume part two of the film. So that's the plan for this evening. I hope you're ready for an evening's entertainment. Mrs. G is the director as usual. She's chatting away in the background. Um, she will be there to answer any of your questions, should you have them. She will also be there monitoring the, what shall we say, monitoring the ticket situation. Ladies and gentlemen, have you paid for your cinema tickets this evening? Oh, naughty Mr. Garchaw. No, no. Um, we are very grateful to ticket donations coming in this evening. So if you are interested in helping us out that way, then links are there. For you. Mrs. G's keeping an eye on that as well, so that's all very good fun. Right, I think then, I think we're almost ready to go. Mrs. G, are we ready to go? Um. Are we ready to go? Oh, oh my god, the finger is poised. The finger is poised. Oh, she's really ready to go. I'm not that ready yet. I was just yeah, asking you if you're ready to yeah. go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats, please, for the main feature. Hold on, I need to, oh, I need to change my registrations, don't I? I need to get my face. Yeah, no. Yes, I'm not ready to go. She's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's saying typical men in the background. Typical, typical, typical. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I can't be, I can't be trusted to get things on time. So, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax. I hope you've got some popcorn. I hope you have some nibbles. I hope you have something to drink. I hope you're cuddling up on the couch to your loved ones. And I hope you're ready for this evening's main feature, the Civil War comedy feature from Buster Keaton, The General.
ladies and gentlemen, for the intermission. Whoo! Ah, Mrs. Garchor, a drink, I think. Yeah. Any chance? Whoo! Ah. So, how are you enjoying it so far? I'm having a whale of a time. I haven't done this for a long, 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 long time, and I think, ah, I think it's great fun. What do you think? Should we do this more regularly? Ah. How's it going in the chat, Mrs. G? Oh, okay. That's not as many as usual. Where are you all? Or is everyone just watching in the background today and not joining in the chat? Oh, it's thirsty work, this. Oh, yes, so, so how do you accompany a silent film? What on earth am I doing? Well, obviously you have to know the film. Um, that's a start. So you sort of watch through the film, get some ideas, first of all, of the characters in the film. And then, of course, the different scenes and what's happening. So, in a silent film, especially a sort of... This is a... It's a sort of a... It's a historic comedy film. When The General was first released back in 1926, it didn't actually go down very well at all. It's only much, 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 much later that people started recognising it for being the wonderful film that it actually is. Buster Keaton himself thought it was his best film. Um, it's based loosely on a true story from the Civil War. Um, obviously the South versus the North and then all the sort of the, the, the power of the railroads, I suppose, is what you could say. And it is based loosely on a true story of some guy who apparently uh, saved the day by rescuing not only his train, but, well, basically his country. That's the plan. Anyway, that was the idea. And uh, Buster Keaton himself said it was his best film. It cost an absolute fortune to make. All of the scenes you have seen so far and will see in the next section, so including all the, I won't give the game away if you don't know the film, but all the exciting and expensive looking scenes that are coming up, uh, they were all very real. Um, there were no CGI special effects in those days. There were no stills special effects in those days. What you see is what you get. So when a train crashes, a train crashes. And there's a scene coming up in the film where a train crashes into a river. And that actually happened. And that cost an absolute fortune to stage, plan and get right. They had one take and they got it right, thankfully. And um, believe it or not, that train wreck stayed in the river until the Second World War. And it became a tourist attraction. Um, they, obviously, they rescued, well not rescued, recovered the metal from the uh, train for the war effort in the 40s. Um, but it was, it was a great tourist attraction for almost 20 years. Unbelievable, really. Um, the film went massively over budget and cost the producers an arm and a leg and made Buster Keaton very unpopular. He wanted to film the... He wanted to film it in the exact locations. So, like you saw there, Marietta, Georgia, and Chattanooga, and you know, that sort of stretch. He wanted to film it there, but they wouldn't let him. So, after scouring the entire country for suitable scenery, they decided on, believe it or not, Oregon. That's about as far away as you can get <laughs> up in the Northwest. And uh, all the scenery you see there is um, perfectly, perfectly chosen. And the trains themselves, those are actual period trains that they borrowed from museums, including the train that they then crashed. Buster Keaton wanted to actually get the general itself out of retirement and get it back onto the tracks for the film. That sadly didn't work. But they had uh, replicas or, well, or similar trains from the time. So historically, it's all very correct what you're seeing on screen this evening. And uh, yeah, quite... A task not only to film it but certainly to piece it all together and then to provide a musical accompaniment to it. So, are you enjoying yourselves? Ladies and gentlemen, what, do you, what have you been saying? What have they been saying in the chat, Mrs. G? Yeah, today is the chat ruhiger, because Jürgen stellt sagt, chatten and film schauen geht nicht, ist deine nur eine Frau. A wonderful comment from our friend Jürgen Stelzer. He said something in German. He said, obviously nobody's chatting tonight because we're all concentrating on the film. And then Vanessa said, unless, of course, you're a woman. Because women can multitask, they can watch films and chat at the same time. So how is it going this evening, Vanessa? Is everything good? Yeah, alles is very good. Alles is very good. Everything is very good, she says. That's good. Now, 
Back in the cinemas of the day, of course, at this point, there would have been an intermission. People would have got up, stretched their legs, gone and gotten themselves a new drink, something to eat, had a smoke, all that kind of thing. And while that was happening, the organist would have appeared from underneath the stage, assuming the uh, organ console was underneath the stage, and would have come up and played a couple of hits of the day. So, what were the hits of the day in 1926? Here's one of them. It's called the Musk Rat Ramp. Just a quick version of that for you tonight. Another hit of the day that may have been played is a wonderfully cute piece of music called, and it almost fits to Buster Keaton this, Five Foot Two, Eyes of Blue. Something like that. <sighs> and then gradually everyone would have made their way back to their seats and gotten ready for part two of the film, which I must now do as well. So, oh, I'm going to have a quick stretch of the back. Oh, getting old, you see. Getting old. And according to Graham, I'm rather girthy. I'm not going to let you away with that, Graham. I'm going to work out some kind of weird comeback for that. Who's there tonight, Vanessa? Alan and Iris. Everybody's there tonight. Who's not there tonight? That's a better question. Who haven't you seen in the chat so far? Rudy. Rudy. Wo ist Rudy? Rudy. Rudy. Ich glaube, Rudy muss viel arbeiten. Rudy muss vielleicht viel arbeiten. We think Rudy has to James work hard. Flores James Flores. Well, it's very yeah. early in the morning yeah. in Australia. It's only like seven o'clock in the morning coming up for in uh, Australia. So James might join us for the second half. Otherwise, everyone's there. <laughs> the Garcho gang is there. Isn't that important? That's exciting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think then it's time to get back to... Let me get my registrations in the right order. That's the one I was looking for before. Yes, that's the one. I, oh, I want to change that. 
Yes, there we are. Graham? Is Graham not there this evening? Mr. Twist, where are you this evening? Vanessa says we're going to have to start. We're going to have to start taking attendance lists, like in school. Yes, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Now, um, before we finish this evening's concert with the second half of this magnificent film. Um, don't forget, tomorrow night is going to be our Fraser and Friends concert, where I have invited members of the Garchow gang from around the world to take part in an international concert. So I myself won't be playing very much at all. I'll be giving the stage up to my friends and colleagues from around the world. So do join in tomorrow night for some surprises. There's some rather interesting surprises there. I think you will like it. Um, I've watched all the submissions, I've sorted them out, and I think it's rather wonderful. And I'm very flattered and very privileged to have such friends who are not only willing, but also able and so talented to be able to do this kind of thing. And um, yeah. We're going to share that tomorrow night. That's going to be a really rather wonderful evening. Good, good. Are you ready for part two? Have you bought your tickets for part two? How are ticket sales this evening, Mrs. Garchow? Tickets, popcorn, läuft alles. Tickets, popcorn, läuft alles. Are people buying popcorn or something? Yeah. Really? <laughs> okay. Okay. Obviously not. <laughs> Very good indeed. Right, let me save that and move that a bit. Oh, here we go. The director, the director has to get ready for this. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and get ready for part two of the magnificent Buster Keaton's General. See you in half an hour.
and gentlemen, there we have it. Ah, Buster Keaton's The General. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that as much as I did. Ah, I'm a little bit exhausted after that. It's been a long time since I've done that. The last time I accompanied a silent film must have been, oh my goodness, over 25 years ago. Let me see, I've been in Germany for 22 years. Hmm. So yes, it must have been sometime in the mid-90s. So good heavens, yes. 25 to 28 years ago is the last time I did it. So I hope, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed what we were doing tonight. And if you would like us to do it again, a number of these silent films are, believe it or not, copyright free these days, such as Buster Keaton's The General. They forgot to copyright. I don't know if you saw right at the beginning, the opening titles, it said copyright, Josef Schenk, I think his name was, but there wasn't a date. And because of that silly little loophole, the film wasn't copyrighted for the entirety of Buster Keaton's life, or Joseph Schenk's life for that matter. And in the 50s, it lost its copyright status. It became public domain. How useful is that for us? So, not bad indeed. A number of those films from those days uh, are now in public domain. So, if you wish, we can start doing uh, silent movie nights from time to time. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat. Vanessa, mm -hmm. what are people saying? This is another guy said you found this excellent. Excellent. Oh, that's very kind of you. I thank you very much indeed. Sure yeah, thank you. I haven't been following the chat tonight. Obviously, I've been working hard. I couldn't follow the chat. So thank you very, very much indeed for being there. Thank you for being in the audience. I hope you had a wonderful evening. Uh, I certainly did. Vanessa, did you have a wonderful evening? Yeah. Vanessa had a wonderful... Were you watching the film? No, you were concentrating so, on the chat. Uh, she was chatting. She was multitasking. It's what women do. We've got to let them do that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much indeed. Tomorrow night, Fraser and Friends. I look very, very much look forward to tomorrow night. It's going to be an amazing concert um, with my friends from around the world. I'm really, really excited to have to hear what you have to say about it as well. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being in the chat. Thank you for your generous donations. It's all going towards the channel one way or another. This piece of poo in the corner is getting updated at some point soon. The cinema organs work very well on it because they are very processor, they're not very processor intensive. The heat issue is not as bad today as it was yesterday. So if I played theatre organ all the time, we might not have to replace anything, but sadly that won't be uh, possible. There are too many wonderful sample sets out there. So. That's it for this evening. Thank you very, very much indeed for joining us for our film night. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good night.